So for this problem, we're given a few atoms, and we're asked to determine which type of nuclear decay each nuclide is most likely to undergo. So to be able to determine that, we're going to be utilizing the neutron to proton ratio for each species in question. The reason for that, as I've included in this graph, um, the green species represent the stable isotopes for different elements, and the yellow dots represent unstable isotopes. And what you can see is that the neutron to proton ratio is a good way to indicate whether or not a species will be stable. And if the neutron to proton ratio is too high for a given predicted range, it indicates that there are too many neutrons and we will most likely undergo beta decay to convert a neutron into a proton in the nucleus. And conversely, if the neutron to proton ratio is too low, that means we need to convert some neutrons to protons, which we will do by emitting a positron. So for each of the four species listed, we're just gonna take a quick look at the graph to see where they fall and then decide which type of decay is most likely to happen for that species. So first we're starting with ruthenium-114. And if we go over here to the graph, you can actually see that ruthenium is included as one of the examples. And ruthenium-114 would fall somewhere up here, uh, quickly or easily spaced in the yellow zone. So what that tells me is that ruthenium is most likely to undergo beta decay because we need to convert some of these neutrons into protons and get this nucleus to be a little bit less heavy in neutron count. So what that's gonna do is we're gonna emit a beta particle, and it's gonna convert our ruthenium to rhodium. So we're just gonna do the same thing for the other three elements in our problem. So if we look at radium, um, radium in general is gonna be an unstable isotope, but its neutron to proton count actually is a little bit low. So we're going to see this one emit a beta particle because we wanna convert one of those protons into a neutron inside the nucleus. So we will see radium turn into francium. This same thing is going to be true for zinc. So zinc's proton to neutron count is too low. So we will see a beta particle emission in order to form copper 58. And finally, if we look at neon, neon's neutron to proton ratio is much too high which means that we're going to emit a beta particle and convert our 31 neon into 31 sodium.